Hi everyone, my name is Nupadon Desimurad and I am a lecturer of law at the Faculty of Law Thammasat University. My section is Human Rights and Legal Theory. Accordingly, in this pre-recorded lecture, I will cover four topics. And the goal of this pre-recorded lecture is to provide you with some foundational background, all right, in order to serve as a basic for further discussion in the course, especially for those who have non-legal background, all right. So the four topics which will be covered Ah, the first one, of course, we will start with the question of what law is. And then I will try to provide you with the basic understandings towards the concepts of law proposed by two main schools of thought in philosophy of law. So the second topic is a concept of law proposed by the National Law School and then for the third topic, it's going to be ones proposed by Legal Positivism School. And for the last topic, I will try to make a connection between the concept of National Law School and the concept of human rights and talk about human rights as a national law. All right. So, to begin with the first question, uh, sorry, the first, uh, the first topic, which is the question, what is law? You might think, or curious, or, or, or are curious, whether why we have to bother ourselves to philosophically discuss about what law is. Because when we have a dispute or we, when we uh, have some work and we have to know what is a relevant law or applicable law, all right, we, we will just look into the written law or the provision of the written law in the Acts of Parliament or in the Constitution or any other law. And that's it. So why we have to bother ourselves to... Uh, to think deeply about this question, uh, this is because in some scenarios, we might find it's difficult to decide whether what is written in the law is law or not, or are we obliged to obey such a law? And essentially, this will involve the problem of conflict of the contents of law and what we think uh, is moral or immoral, all right? To make it more concrete, please look into the slide. Uh, this is a hypothetical situation, all right, that, that I make and uh, hopefully it will make it more clear, all right? So let's imagine that X is a state X, the state X, and the set act has one particular law which is problematic, but this law is validly enacted by the competent authority. The purpose of this law is to solve with the problem of serious food shortage. The contents of this law is that if family in set X can have only one child, and after having a first child, a woman who has become pregnant is obliged to take an abortion unless the first child of the family is dead. And if this law is broken by any family in this state, all members of the family will be sentenced to five years imprisonment. And what is more is that the extra child 
an innocent baby will be taken by the relevant authority immediately and will face death penalty. The question is that: Do you think this is law? And to make it more effective, if you were a person, all right, who live in that country instead X, would you comply with the law? If you were a mother who is going to have a second baby, would you get an abortion? Or if you were a father, would you let your Wife, get an abortion, or perhaps thinking as a judge. If you were a judge, all right, and in the case, all right, the relevant the law is this law. Would you apply this law to punish the members of the family and ask the authority to kill an innocent child? So you can see, this might divide the opinions of the people. Some people might think that because the law is validly enacted by the state, so it's lawful according to the law-making process of that country. So it is law. All right, that's this. However, some might think that that this law is problematic because it is immoral. However, even among those who think that this law might be immoral, might ah uh, perhaps do not share the same the same opinion on what what part of this law is immoral. For example, you can see that ah uh, if we ask whether is it immoral to prohibit the family to have more than one children. All right. Can the state at all enact this law, and we can still regard as a moral law or a law? Or the problem is not about the contents of the law because there is a rational ground behind this a uh, prohibition. All right, the one child law, for example. But some might think that the contents is okay. However. The punishment on the member of family is disproportionate. All right, it's too severe to punish the one who just have a baby. All right, for example, a second baby, ah, uh, to the five years imprisonment. All right, so it's again the principle of proportionality, which is ah uh, a kind of one one form of the principle of justice. All right, so. For those poor people, he might think that so if the punishment is shank into like a fine of ten thousand baht, it might be okay. For example, so I mean, this situation will affect the problem of national law or, ah, uh, the idea of morality about the uncertainty of national law or morality. All right. However, you can see that there might be a specific part. That we can share, all right, or have the same opinion about uh, uh, whether it is moral or immoral, which is of course the punishment on a uh, extra child who is absolutely innocent, all right. He or she was just born, didn't do anything, and need to be punished, all right. So, so this also ah uh, affect. The potential of the existence of the objective standard of morality or national law. Okay, all right. So perhaps so. Let's see the ah uh, something which is more fami ah uh, ah uh, familiar to us or ah uh, the real life example. So you might have heard about the notorious section forty four of the two thousand fourteen interim constitution. And all right, ah,、uh, even though section forty four ah was incorporated in the interim ah、uh, constitution of two thousand fourteen, 
you you may have known that that uh, section two hundred sixty five of the current constitution also extended the application all right of the section forty four into this current constitution also however um uh, the period has ended because uh section twenty uh two hundred sixty five uh, it's just a transitor, a transitory provision. Okay, so this means that all right. Uh, before we have a government from the election, all right, the NCPO. Uh, we stand for the National Council for Peace and Order. All right, has a hat. I'm sorry, the power, which is quite uh we can regard it as absolute power and it's caused uh, some problems so according to section 44 of 2014 in the limb constitution all right the head of the national council for the peace uh, for peace and order with the upper vote of the national council for peace and order shall have power to order restrain or perform any act whether such act has legislative, executive, or judicial force, the orders and the acts, including the performance in compliance with such orders, shall be deemed lawful and constitutional under this condition and shall be final. So you can see that this is again the principle of separation of power. Because of the head of NCPO has a legislative power, executive power, and judicial power. And the head of NCPO will not be held responsible for what they have done um, in virtue of using the power of Section 44 because the Section 44 says that all actions all right according to section 44 uh you can see that the acts including performance in of compliance with such order shall be deemed lawful and constitutional under the constitution so which means that whatever the head of ncp or order a command is this lawful so the court couldn't hold him responsible. So, for example, so for example, imagine that if the head of NCPO orders something immoral, seriously immoral, it is still the law. For example, all right. Okay. So, uh, I hope that the the, the scenarios, the two example that I have given you, will uh depict you some points of the debate or the, the concept of the problems of what law is and of course it will involve with the uh, problem of the conflict between morality all right and to to solve or to understand what is law what law is then uh we may need to look into the schools of thoughts that will help us to understand what law is. And two main schools of thought, all right. Uh, of course, as I have said in the beginning, on one hand is the national law school, and on the second hand is legal positivism school. So now you might be curious, what is the difference between these two schools? So I will try to give you some thoughts on the concept of law by uh, philosophers of each school and, and let's see what is the essence of the difference between these two schools all right let's start with the positivism or legal positivism school first so according to austin according to austin general jurisprudence or the philosophy of positive law is concerned with law as it necessarily is rather than with the law as it ought to be. Alright. With law as it must be, be it good or bad. 
rather than the law as it must be, if it be good. And then Austin also said that the existence of law is one thing, its merit and the merit is another. What does this mean? So, all right, even the law is bad. It is still law, but it is a bad law. So the existence of law is one issue, and the quality in terms of morality, all right, is another issue. So even it is a bad law, it's still the law. Okay, for Kelsen, Kelsen said that uh, his theory, all right, is a theory of positive law, which is the theory which attempt to answer the question what and how the law is, how the law is, and not how it ought to be. It's a science of law and not legal politics. So Kelsen's proposed the theory of pure theory of law. He would like to purify the law and it could the alien elements from the concept of law. And one of the alien element according to Kelsen is morality. Alright. And then let's see what Haas say about it. Haas is uh, one of uh, the very famous philosopher of law. All right, uh, he's an, uh, he's one of the most influential uh, philosophers of law uh, in in UK and also in the English speaking world. So Haas said that here we shall take legal possibility to mean the simple contention that it is no sin, no sin, unnecessary to that laws produce or certify certain demands of morality, though in fact they have often done so. And then, Ras, Ras, who is a, a student of heart, all right, uh, Ras said that a jurisprudential theory is acceptable only if it tests for the identifying the contents of the law and determining its existence depend exclusively on the facts of human behavior capable of being described in value neutral terms and apply without resort to moral argument. So uh let's focus on heart. Alright, with with also uh his concept is so reflected in uh the statement made by Lars. So he said that there is no sense a necessary truth that laws reproduce or certify certain demands of morality, though in fact they have often done so, which means that uh, there exit no necessary relationship between law and morality. All right, so law can be separated from morality. All right, so this is a separation thesis. Law uh, doesn't need to be compatible with morality in order to be a law to elaborate more all right uh, but uh uh we will talk about this later in the uh when we talk in 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 more depth in in this uh uh concept of legal positivism all right and let's move to the national law theory all right you might have heard the famous the famous uh first Unjust law is not law. Unjust law is not law, for example. Or for the Brinbis, um, he said that traditional national law theory offers arguments for the existence of the higher law. So, in this sense, higher law means that uh, the law which is hierarchically higher, higher than what? Is it higher than positive law or the law of the state or recognized by the state? So in this case, mean that if the positive law or the law of the state is in conflict with that higher law, all right, it will result in the invalidity of that positive law. Okay, for Saint Aquinas, he said that law is nothing else than an ordinance or prison for the promotion of the common good. Okay, and for Finis, for Finis. Uh, according to him, he accused that 
natural law theory except that law can be considered at considered and spoken of both as the sheer social fact of power and practice and at a set of reasons for action that can be and often are sound at reasons and therefore no motive for reason even people at this by them. Uh, so according to Finnish, law can have two forces behind them. The first one is a legal force and the second one is moral force. So if the law is compatible with the morality, all right, there will exist uh, another force, or pop, uh, I mean one of the two forces, um, which is the moral force. So if the law is compatible with the uh, with morality, uh, it means that rather than the enforce, legal enforcement by the officer that try to uh, enforce the law, uh, people themselves will think that because uh, it is a law that compatible with morality. So we are morally obliged to obey with such law. So this means this mean that in case that the law is compatible with morality, uh, officials, officers of the state will easily enforce such law because ap apart from the force that uh, created by the legal mechanism by the state, uh, people tend to obey the law, which that thing is compatible with morality, all right? And for Fuller, Fuller proposed that law considered merely as an order contains then is in its own implicit morality. This morality of order must be respected if we are to create anything that can be called law. So for Fuller, all right, if the law does it comply with morality, however, according to Fuller, there are uh, two types of morality. External morality, which is uh, the goal of that law, all right, substance of the law, and the internal morality, which is about the procedure of how law is made, uh, how law is enforced or interpreted. The law needs to comply with both internal and external morality in order to be called a law, all right? So, uh, all right. So, according to Howard Davis and David Hawkoff, he tried to conclude that in all its diverse form, national law philosophy stands for the possibility of having objective standards. What is an objective standard? So, this is a national law or the morality that will try to provide a limitation to the law made by the state, for example. And for Friedman, uh, they say, he said that the history of national law is a tale of the search of mankind for absolute justice. All right. So just to conclude, all right, uh, the essence of the difference between legal positivism and, and National law school is about the necessary relationship between law and morality. The national law school believes that there exists certain types of necessary relationship between law and morality. However, for legal positivists, they believe in the separation thesis that law and morality can exist separately all right without any necessary relationship between them